On January 9th, a new Pokemon Direct was held where we learned that Pokemon Sword and Shield would be getting DLC in the form of an expansion pass in multiple parts. And I think it's fair to say that this is something that is completely different for Pokemon fans because we've never seen this before with any other Pokemon game. But anyways, currently we know of two expansions that will be coming to Sword and Shield called the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. But who knows if more will come in the future, and I for one cannot wait to explore explore these new areas and get to experience the story built into them. And with these expansions to the games, of course comes the possibility of new Pokemon being added to these games. Both the Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra expansions have a lot to offer when it comes to diverse environments, so there's a ton of ideas I have for new Pokemon that could be added into the Galar region. And today, I wanted to talk about some designs for Pokemon that I would love to see in these expansions for Pokemon Sword and Shield. And of of course, all the Pokemon's designs featured in this video are not my own, because I can't draw for sh**, but be sure to check out the amazing artist's work, which will be linked in the description below. Videos like this would definitely not be possible without these talented designers, so be sure to give them some love and, you know, go comment saying that Arizo sent you. It would, it would mean a lot. So without further ado, let's dive into my top 5 new Pokemon for the Pokemon Sword and Shield Expansion Pass. And if you guys enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. And with that being said, let's get started. Alright, there. I, I freaking changed it. It's no longer the same stuff over and over again, okay? So, so leave me alone. Also follow me on Instagram, please. The Isle of Armor expansion will introduce a wide variety of new landscapes to Pokemon Sword and Shield, including beaches, bogs, forest caves, dunes, and it's based off the Isle of Man, which is an island existing in the Irish Sea in between England and Ireland. So I guess it only seems right to base our first new Pokemon on a species that lived on the island. I mean, it makes sense, right? I don't know. And thanks to the amazing work from Dark and Windy, we have this little furry critter to talk about. Polecats were a species that were once native to the Isle of Man, but were lost before being reintroduced to the island in the 1600s. And with that little bit of interesting history of trivia in mind, I think it would be pretty cool to see a polecat Pokemon show up in the Isle of Armor. I could see this Pokemon living out in like the dunes or cave areas of the game. And obviously, by the looks of it, this little guy would definitely be a pure fire type, but an interesting interesting idea could be that dependent on where it's raised, it could change what it evolves into, and of course, with that, what its secondary typing could possibly end up being. Now, when it comes to stats, I could see this Pokemon being pretty common throughout the Isle of Armor, so I would see it having fairly mild stats like 50 HP, 65 attack, 45 defense, everything basically around the 40 to 50 range. Now, keep in mind, this is only a pre-evolution Pokemon, so the stats in general won't be that great to look at, but once it evolves, I was thinking it could be a little bit more of a physical sweeper, since I did give it that base 65 attack. Some moves I could see this Pokemon learning would be Flare Blitz, Fire Fang, Super Power, U-Turn, Rock Slide, or maybe even Earthquake possibly. I mean, why not? Freaking Snubble could learn it and like, what is it, like, like two feet? I see this Pokemon being very similar to like a Darmanitan or a Typhlosion, but having a possibly unique ability that could play differently so it wouldn't just be a clone. The name for our little Fire Polecat could be Cherit, which is the name that Dark and Windy gave to it, but I'm curious about what you guys would name it, so let me know in the comment section below. Coming in at our number 4 spot, we move over to our Snowy Tundra expansion called the Crown Tundra, which is said to be based on Scotland. So of course, since this expansion is very much focused on a winter environment, and exploring deep inside Pokemon dens underground, we are going to be focusing on some ice type designs that could possibly live underground in this environment. And this new Pokemon here fits that to a T. This icy gnome would fit perfectly into the Crown Tundra expansion, and it even resembles kind of like a hedgehog a little bit, but... I don't know if you can see it, but... Somewhere. And that is actually a native species to Scotland. This amazing design comes from the team creating the Pokemon fan game Pokemon Sage, and this concept is called Snogur. 
It even has a Prevo called Snome, which is really adorable in like a mini Keemstar kind of way, but you know, to each his own, don't judge me for what I find cute. But anyways, they did an amazing job designing this Pokemon, and I could definitely see it being like a gatekeeper in a sense to the underground portion of the Pokemon den. As for typing, it's pretty obvious that Pokemon Sage gave it the pure ice typing, but I could also see this getting the ground typing as well. Now, when it comes to stats, it would make sense for it to have a relatively higher stat line, so we're just gonna reference the stats from Pokemon Sage here with 95 HP, 130 attack, 55 defense, 80 special attack, 90 special defense, and 60 speed. Moveset wise, I can see Snogar rocking Icicle Crash, Ice Shard, Earthquake, and Hammer Arm. Or if you want, Stone Edge could work here too, so it's really just up to you. Snogar would be a new Pokemon to not think lightly of, and a possible great candidate to be added to your team when traveling through the Crown Tundra expansion. I know I want one. As we head back to the Isle of Armor expansion for this next Pokemon, we have to remember that we're most likely going to be traversing through a large amount of water here. Hopefully it won't be too much water though, otherwise we all know who's going to be giving this expansion pass a bad review. <clears throat> But anyways, there are a ton of different species of fish that are native to the UK region. But what really made this next new fish Pokemon design stick out to me was it having two different forms. This is Amprid, which was made by my good friend Smiley, and it has a day and night form. The reason why this design stuck out to me so much is because it reminded me a bit of Morpeko, but you know with water. And it would be really awesome to see those two Pokemon side by side being friends and doing whatever Pokemon do, I guess. I just I just wish I had friends, but you know, at least I can see it in, in, the, in the game. For the typing of Amprid, I would love to see the day form be a pure water type, while the night form could be like a water dark type. I can also see Amprid being a standalone Pokemon with no evolution to it, similar to Morpeko, even though Smiley did intend for this Pokemon to evolve. But for stats, I could see it having 70 HP, 40 attack, 75 defense, 95 special attack, 45 special defense, and 85 speed, with the day and night form having different abilities that differentiate the two a bit more. A general moveset for the two could be like Surf, Scald, Calm Mind, Ice Beam, Rain Dance, or for the night form, it could exclusively learn Dark Pulse to work with its dark typing. Amprid would be a great fish Pokemon to discover in the Isle of Armor expansion, and I would just love to see more Pokemon with multiple forms be added into the games in the future. Heading back to the Crown Tundra expansion, we have Crawlig and its evolution at a co a Coligon. There, there we go. This is another Pokemon designed by, of course, Smiley. Both these Pokemon are super unique looking and would fit right into the theme of the expansion. I could honestly see Crawlig and a Coligon all over the underground area of the Pokemon dens. Overall, this design really stands out to me and would be a very interesting Pokemon to discover while traversing through the Crown Tundra. For its typing, I think Smiley's choice for typing is pretty much spot on here with it being ground and ice. Even even though, yes, that does mean I have two ice ground type Pokemon on this list, but you know, I don't care, it's my list, leave me alone. Plus, who wouldn't mind seeing a new ice ground type Pokemon? Like, we haven't had one since like the Mamoswine line, so it's been it's been a long time, okay? When it comes to stats, I definitely see Crawlig and a Coligon being a lot more defensive and not really the aggressive type. So a Coligon could have somewhere around 120 HP, 60 attack, 110 defense, 85 special attack, 95 special defense, and 40 speed. It would definitely be able to take some decent damage, but still be able to deal some okay special damage as well. So, you know, the whole package. Moveset wise, a Coligon should have access to moves like Earth Power, Ice Beam, Rest, and Toxic. I could see this Pokemon being an absolute nuisance to other trainers teams defensively, and who knows what type of abilities it could get to make it even stronger.
And finally, coming in at the number one spot, this is, in my opinion, the most creative Pokemon on this list, and it would blow my mind if something like this was added into the Isle of Armor expansion. One of the more interesting species that have been imported onto the Isle of Man are Wallabies. So coming in at the number one spot, we have Wallaboo and Kangas. These Pokemon designs are so cool and unique, and it would be absolutely crazy to find one of these in the Isle of Armor expansion. Devil D-Man did an absolutely amazing job job designing these Pokemon. Even though Kangas may be more based on a kangaroo, it still sort of works considering how closely kangaroos and wallabies are. Plus, let's be honest, Wallaboo is the most adorable thing ever, so you know, give me a pass here. When it comes to typing, Wallaboo would be more of a pure ghost type, and then when it evolves into Kangast, it could probably become something like a ghost fighting type. Then for stats, I would definitely want Kangast to be a mixed sweeper with 75 HP, 115 attack, 85 defense, 115 special attack, 80 special defense, and 110 speed. Kangas moveset would be very diverse here, being of course a mixed sweeper, so a physical moveset could be close combat, shadow punch, bulk up, and U-turn, and for a special moveset, you could have Focus Blast, Shadow Ball, Nasty Plot, and Vacuumoid. Wallaboo and Kangas would be amazing to find in the Isle of Man expansion, and it fits perfectly into the theme with you starting off training in a dojo, so you know, it's, it's almost like I planned this. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and let me know in the comments section below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and become an Aribro today. If you want to check out the previous video I did, be sure to click the annotation on the left. And if you guys want to see some more Pokemon Sword and Shield videos, click the other annotation on the right. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time.